and welcome back to our free trader thank you so much for coming back on here again and if you are new here please do think of hitting the subscribe and notification button and i know that there are some of you out there that watch my videos but you haven't hit that subscribe button yet so please think of doing so that would really make me happy today i'm coming up with a topic that bothers quite a few people in the diaspora and that is the issue of having to change your identity because some people when they come into the diaspora especially when they come as refugees take up a false identity a false name a false birthday or a false place of origin now i know that some people will criticize this and this is not what this video is about but this video is really about this question I've often been asked. Is it possible after years to change my identity? Because many of these people that took up a false identity did it to protect themselves or their families. And if you want to criticize that, just think about people that have to go into a witness protection program where they are even being given a false identity, a new identity by the government. So let's really focus on this. Is it possible after some years to really come out and say, this is actually my true name and I want to change the records? Now, there's a very recent case in the media, and this is the case of a young football player, 22 years old, who has been playing for the VfB in Stuttgart. Silas Wamambituka. He has been playing for the VfB Stuttgart, and they took him over from Paris. They actually paid a transfer fee of 8 million. There were rumors going on that that wasn't his name. And just very recently, Silas came out and told his team, the VfB, that his real name is Silas Katompa Mbumba. So together with the VfB and his lawyer, they went to the authorities. He virtually reported himself and told his story. He was brought to France as a very young player, 18 years old, and his football agent then kept him in a house with some other boys that play football. And even while he was playing for a second league football team in France. He was living with his agent. His money was going to the agent. He was just being given a small pocket money. And it was his agent when he was 18 that told him, convinced him that he had to take up a different name if he wanted to stay in Europe. He had to take up a different name for some reason. Maybe the agent did not want to pay any transfer fees to his club in the Congo. So whatever the case, that was how this young man took up this false name. But now he's come out and said his name is Silas Katompa Mvumba. The other name he was using, Wamangituka, was one of his father's name but not his real name and he's actually one year older than what was on his papers so what happened to silas he was sentenced to pay thirty thousand euros by the court and he and his football club the vfb accepted that sentence Furthermore, he was banned by the DFB from playing football till September because that was not sport-like. But he was given his papers with his real name and date of birth because the 
authorities, the immigration authorities, Auslander, Behörde in Germany, put into consideration that actually, even if he had used his real name, he would have been granted a right to stay in Germany because of his football. He's a professional player. And of course, what he's doing is of value to the society. Silas and the Power Bay have accepted all these conditions. Now people that hear this in the news and have the same problem might think, oh yes, I can come out now and bring out my real identity and the documents can be changed and I can continue living in the diaspora. But not so fast. This is something that you don't have a legal right to. This is something that is in the discretion of the court and the immigration, the home office, whatever it is called in the country where you live in. So what does it look like? In the first case, you have to consult with a lawyer because since this is a discretionary thing, that means it is not your right. The government, the court can decide, and they will decide differently in every case. If you're ever thinking of coming out with the truth, bringing up your real name, please don't do it without a very good lawyer. Because the situation is as follows. If you gave a false identity or date of birth, that is fraudulent. It is a criminal offense. You use a fraudulent method to get your documents, your stay, which means you can be punished. It's a criminal offense. The court can punish you for that offense. Secondly, since you used false information to get those documents to stay here, the government can remove your right to stay. They can take away that stay from you. You can lose your immigration status either as an asylum seeker or right of abode since you got it fraudulently. That's actually the situation. However, there is hope. The government can make a waiver. They can make an exception if they believe that the reason for letting you stay here actually outweighs the reason for sending you back, for taking their documents away from you and sending you back. Please, I'm trying to really explain this video in a way that everybody can understand. So again, if you use a false name, date of birth or place of origin, you have committed a crime. It's a criminal offense you could be sentenced to even imprisonment or to pay money. Secondly, because you got your paper, your status fraudulently, it can be taken away from you unless the government decides to allow you to stay for certain reasons. And these are the reasons. The government may decide to waive this taking away papers from you. If you have a family here and your family has a right to stay here because the government tries to protect family and the unity of family. So they wouldn't want to send you away, your family living here and you being sent back to your country. So under such a situation the government may decide to waive it and say okay you can say but they may give you some money to pay as a kind of punishment secondly for any other humanitarian reason 
maybe if you are sick or have mental issues or taking care of a parent or a partner that is really sick that's a good example maybe you have a partner that is really sick dependent on you out of humanitarian reasons they can ask you to stay they wave it they wave pushing you out also if it is in public interest for you to stay like this case of the footballer silas because he's a football player and well known they may waive it so bottom line of this is when you hear oh so so and so went he brought out his real name he was just given a punishment of ten thousand euro to pay he now is able to use his real name don't act on that alone because every case is looked at different that is what it means that the court has a discretion it depends on your own particular situation it depends on how understanding the authorities are the person you meet there how the person wants to help you it depends on the court and you wouldn't want to go into such a risk without speaking to a very good lawyer you really have to weigh that before taking such a decision. I hope this video has been of help. If you like my video, please subscribe and encourage me so that I can make more videos. Cheers!